Hi, and thanks so much for joining me today. We are doing a get ready with me featuring these Chantecaille products. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. I've been waiting to do this because it's been so difficult to get a hold of, but I did spot this on a retailer, so I will list it below. But we are talking about the Walk for Giants palette by Chantecaille. And I feel like these are the most traditional fall colors I've seen go by on any fall release. So I was really excited about this one because I just love these colors. I think they were so beautiful. And I do have all of the lip shades, so I will try those all on for you in case you weren't sure which one to pick up or which ones to pick up. Let's go ahead though. I'm going to start with no makeup or very little makeup and we'll do the whole look. Okay, <laughs> I do have a little bit of foundation on because it was running while there was no sound. So, okay, I'll put a little clip of like really fast me applying it so you can see what it looks like, but then we'll come back here. So you'll be able to see just quickly kind of where I went from no makeup to this point. I was commenting on the silkiness of this texture, very silky, and if you have dry areas or like areas that are fine lines where sometimes foundation can settle, this doesn't do that. It just melts into the skin. It's such a beautiful foundation. I'm just gonna conceal under the eyes and then go in with base concealer. So my favorite two, we're gonna go with the Sizzly number four under eye concealer, I love this. I don't have to powder and then I'll go in with La Prairie number four, also I don't have to powder. So we get a bit of color correction here, you can see it has that peachy tone to it. La Prairie is next. Yeah, this definitely has more of a cooling feeling than the other one and I don't know why because they're both metal applicators. Yeah, it is early in the morning so if I get puffiness it will be in the morning. I'm going to prep a little bit with the Chantecaille. And the reason I don't conceal with this is it's so lightweight. So if you need lightweight coverage, I think it's pretty. So we're using this as a bit of a primer. I'm gonna go in with my concealers by Clay de Peau Mocha. Okay, let's go ahead and set we're going to try this Chantecaille Loose Powder again. I haven't used it very much, so it's hard for me to really say how I get along with it, but this is in the shade Light. I've got a La Mer powder brush. I still haven't figured out the powder puff situation yet, so we're just gonna go in. Okay, next of course, Hummingbird Powder Standard And then makeup always looks just a little bit better after I let it settle in. I'm gonna go in with just a bit of the By Terry Hyaluronic Powder in Light Apricot just to make sure we are kind of color corrected up here in front. Some days it shows through more, some days it doesn't. Kind of just depends on the day. So I always have something like that ready on hand just do a little bit more color correcting after I powder. That's a lot of powder, but that's what I do every day. <laughs> so we're gonna take this Serena bronzer. I just wanna bronze the exterior. I've got a Marc Jacobs. This is a blush brush, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Hopefully this lighting is a little bit better. Oh gosh, see when I put bronzer on, getting in that hairline is just, I'm gonna take a smaller brush and fix that in a second. It looks okay here. Well, actually it doesn't. It, <laughs> sometimes it looks okay in person and then I look on camera like, what? Um, we'll fix that. I also have that hairspray, the colored hairspray. So sometimes it ends up on my face if I go too close to the hairline. So that is the trickiest part. Like if I didn't have that temporary spray, it would be no problem. I would just go in and, you know, really get into the hairline, but I just don't want it to be, <laughs> uh, I don't want that color to end up on my face. I have to go back and fix that a little bit more closely. It just, ugh, it always sticks out. Okay, let's go in and buff a little bit more just to blend that a little bit better. Yeah, even on me, Serena can, like if I'm not careful, can get really like intense. So, so far, like what, 12 minutes? That's not bad. I mean, of course, I will edit this out, um, some of it, just because it's just application over and over. Um, 
but at least I got to see everything. This one is almost, I, I need to find my, oops, I always do that bump into the mic. This is almost, can you see it? We'll keep it a bit more natural today. My brows look totally different today. Okay. <laughs> That's why a pencil comes in handy. Let me find it. Your pencil comes in handy when something like this is like uneven looking. Sometimes my brows are fast and sometimes they're not. Just depends on how it goes that day. I think that's enough messing with the brows for now. It's been <laughs> it's been five minutes, so I've cut that out, of course. Almost 20 minutes just for the base, but now we're ready to go in with this palette, Walk for Giants, and it's finally available more widely, at least from the last time I looked. And we're going to go in, I have used this before, I've been playing with it. So I'm going to go in kind of like Janelle did, but uh, with a little bit of a twist. So we'll take this more goldish color first, and we're going to go under the brow bone. I loved her tutorial. There's a Shantikai YouTube channel if you don't already subscribe, but her tutorials are on there as well as other uh, members of the team. So make sure to go see them because they do a great job of uh, demoing their new products. So I love it. Okay, we're just gonna go in with that really lightly. I don't usually do so much under the brow bone, but this is quite subtle. Yeah, this is a really subtle glow, so it's not like a really bright highlighter that you would be putting under the brow bone. It just gently accentuates that area. So we're going to go, and let me see, I'm gonna take it down a little bit further too, just a little bit less, but kind of on the whole eye, just to make it a little bit more continuous. Very, very slightly though. Okay, let's go ahead and take this color. We're gonna put this in the crease. This one doesn't appear to have the same level of shimmer as the uh, gold, so I think in the crease it works really well. I would call these more subdued, definitely, than other palettes I've been trying recently. Now we're going to take this beautiful color and put that on the eyelid. I'm just going to put it all over. I'm going to run it underneath the eye. Yeah, this is one of those palettes you can't go overboard on easily. I'm taking Earth and I'm going in the tight line area. I'm also going to go above the lash line. I'm not doing a wing today, but I'll do a nice soft liner. But I will go in a wing type of shape. I'm just looking for Celadon here. I oh, I mean, it's nice to have all of these. I just can't find it. Yeah, I thought this would be beautiful in the waterline with all of the shades that are in this palette. Of course, Chantecai Mascara. I think it's just about time for a new one. This one is running out. It's been, you know, a good amount of time, so it's lasted quite a bit. And if I'm not making a video, this is usually the one I have on. It's just so easy to apply and the results are beautiful. Okay, so that's three coats. <laughs> yeah, and this builds up just so beautifully. I did curl my lashes though before I started my makeup. Let's go ahead and add blush. You already know what I'm going to add, so. <laughs> Shankai Manta Ray. Okay, so I had questions about brushes to use for different, I think it was bronzers, but, um, I also use different brushes for different blushes. This one's a little bit more dense, so it does take more work to get the product on the brush. Um, but the brush itself can help diffuse out the, br the blush, the brush, the blush, <laughs> the blush. Um, so like I could use this, or I'm gonna use my giant Kabuki brush here by Ray Morris. More densely packed, the bristles are not as flexible, so it picks up the product much more easily. So I don't know if you could see that difference there, but color goes on much faster with this brush versus this brush. So I like this one for more densely packed brushes. This is the Ray Morris. Um, and I like this for more like powdery type blushes, ones that uh, I can grab a little bit more easily. So. I do still pull for my Ray Morris brushes quite a bit, but you just have a different um, effect, a different impact, I think, based on the brush. 
Let me know if you use different brushes for blushes <laughs> or bronzers. This is where I think I put too much on. So a little bit with the hummingbird powder, buff it in. It's just such a pretty blush though. I love it. Let's go in with this as a highlighter and see how it works. We'll go in with this gold right here. I've got a Wayne Goss fan brush. It's like the only fan brush I use. <laughs> I love this one. Yeah, it's a really pretty highlighter. Really like, so on a scale of like one to 10 on glow, one being the least like beaming highlight and 10 being the most, this is very nice and subtle. It's more of a, um, it's more subdued for sure. So I'd put it on like a three, something like that. I love it because if you like highlighter but you don't want it so obvious, this one is really pretty as a highlighter. Yeah, I think that's so nice. Okay, finally, let's go to lip colors. We're going to try them all on. Let's go with Plumeria first. Actually, I saw Amelia Liana. I don't know if you follow her. I, she's a blogger, vlogger in the UK. She put this on, it was really pretty on her. She's like medium skin tone, but a little bit cooler, and it works really beautifully on her. Yeah, I think this one is great if you have a cooler skin tone. I think it'd be really pretty on you. This is Acacia. Mm, these, by the way, are the lip veils. That formula. You can probably tell this is the one I pull for the most. <laughs> Okay, and we're going to go in with Tamarind next. So if there is a fall lip shade in here, this is it. This to me screams fall. <laughs> so pretty, I think it's just such a rich color and one that I don't have. I think you know what I'll do? Let's add Acacia on top. I'm just curious, I haven't mixed these yet. Let's see. This is a look that I would wear normally every day. I think there's just a little bit more intensity because of the lighting, but otherwise that is the order I go in in terms of application. I think eyebrows make the biggest difference, but also the eye makeup. So usually if I do a wing, it really just kind of makes everything a lot more, I'm gonna say formal, but I feel like with the eyeliner I did today, it's much more casual, which is again, my everyday makeup. So let's talk about this palette. I I hope it didn't break. It didn't break. It's still in one piece. Yeah, I have a very hard surface here too. One of these days something is gonna break, but not this, Not today was not the day. Okay, so we've got this Safari Collection Eye Trio. Let's just read a little bit about it. This elegant elephant-inspired trio of Safari shades was created to celebrate and support Chantecaille's most iconic animal. Sylvia and her daughter Olivia chose a color palette that reflected the African landscape at sunset and the soft taupe tones of an elephant's hide. These highly wearable suede textured neutral eye shine shades were chosen to complement all skin tones and give a natural defined look to the eyes. Even though these were created to reflect sunsets and elephant's hides, I really feel like they also represent fall. There are a couple of phrases here that I think really represent this palette elegant and highly wearable. So you don't get that intense shimmer, that intense even color payoff. It's That's why I think it's so highly wearable. It is hard to go overboard on this, but you still see just the most beautiful, subtle dimension. I think if you saw someone in person, you would want to know what they were wearing if they were wearing this because it's so subtly beautiful and different than so many of the other eyeshadow palettes that are out there right now. My favorite way to wear this is to use this one color though and use that all over the lid and some mascara and a little bit of eyeliner. I think it's so pretty. Let's go ahead and talk about these lip shades. Again, I tried them all on for you. Plumeria does pull a bit cool on me. So if you are cooler in skin tone than me, I think this would be really pretty on you. And then we've got Acacia. Okay, this one is my favorite one. I have been wearing this a lot. In fact, if you tuned into the um, the YouTube live that I was lucky enough to do with Shantikai to release their new product, their um, cleansing balm, this is what I was wearing to begin with. I was wearing Acacia. I, actually, I wear this in combination with this for a nice monotone, monotone, monochromatic look. <laughs> 
because I feel like they really complement each other. So I love this on the eyes, this on the lips, so pretty. And you also got to see a lot of other Shantikai products in action. These really are my daily items because they are so highly wearable and really easy to use. So beautiful results, beautiful process in terms of putting them on. It's always enjoyable. Let me know if you have questions about any of the other items. I know I have featured them in other videos, but some of you may be new here. And I have a lot of experience with these particular products because I wear them so much. So please let me know. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But that's it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.